Hey teachers, welcome to the 2022 school year in the Barrow Library. I want to go over just a few things um, related to the library so that we're all on the same page with how I can support you throughout this school year. So first, I wanted to talk just a little bit about collaboration. Um, that's the biggest thing that I do in the library is work on lessons that support what you are working on in your classroom. And this can happen in many different ways from collaborating with an individual teacher on a project that you want to do in just your classroom. Um, probably the most popular thing is to work with you at the beginning of each quarter on your team to plan big projects that we might do together, maybe once per quarter or once each half of the year. Um, where you come to the library several times to work on something uh, for a culminating project. Um, I also wanted to remind you that I don't just work with uh, homeroom teachers, that I can collaborate with specials teachers, resource teachers. I can work with small groups of students or individual students if needed. Um, and I can also pull classroom resources if there's something that you don't necessarily need to come to the library for, but you need some books in your classroom for a particular topic, I can work on that as well. So those are some kinds of collaboration. Um, we also in the library have lots of special events that happen throughout the year from book fair, dot day, world read aloud day, read across America, hour of code, Polar Express, poem in your pocket, maker space with the UGA students, and we do a big student book budget project. So there are lots of things that happen in the library. And all of this happens because our library operates on what's called a flexible schedule. Flexible schedules mean that you don't have a specific time that you come to the library each week, but instead you schedule times that work for you and your students um, throughout the year. Um, so a few things about scheduling that can be confusing um, since we don't have a fixed time that you come every um, week. One is that you can't put a recurring appointment on the calendar. So that means you can't go in and say, I'm going to come every Tuesday at 830. I'm going to book it for the whole year. Doing that prevents other people from being able to come at times that they need to. It also interferes with other kinds of projects or special events that I may be trying to plan in the library, as well as other tasks that I have to get done in the library beyond just the teaching aspect. Um, so book days and times that work with your curriculum. If we're working on a grade level project, it's great to get those on the calendar at the beginning of the quarter if we can, so that teachers who are just wanting to schedule week to week can find the times that work for them. It's okay to book a week or two ahead, but we're not going to book a whole quarter ahead uh, for your single library visits. Remember that Library visits can be a story and checkout. They can be something connected with a topic that you're teaching in any subject area. It can also just be a checkout time. If there's, if you um, aren't really needing a story time or a lesson and you just need your class to come and check out books, we can do that as well. Or we can have a specific focus for what we're trying to check out. Um, so we're very open about that, um, that type of scheduling. Um, what will happen is by Wednesday of each week, I would like you to have your appointment scheduled for the upcoming week if you're coming. And then on at the end of the day on Wednesday, my plan is to change all of the open times left to open checkout time. And that means that during those times, you can just send students to the library to check out um, without an adult small groups of three to four students. And um, I really want to work this year on getting students independent and coming to the library and finding what they need so that hopefully eventually we can get back to the way that we were, where students just come whenever they don't have to be scheduled um, and they can help themselves. But we really had a hard time after uh, virtual learning of getting back in the routines and knowing what to do. And I'm hoping this is the year that we get everything back on track. So I'll try to be consistent about doing that on Wednesdays, blocking out remaining times and putting that on the buzz so that you will see all of the available open checkout time so that you can plan your week accordingly just to send students as needed if you want to spend small groups. That does work best in second through fifth grade. Kindergarten and first grade, it's a little trickier. Um, so we can talk about that if you're wanting to send students individually. 
Um, a little bit about checkout that can sometimes be confusing. So I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. When kids come to the library, I know that there are sometimes specific things that you need them to check out, um, and that's perfectly fine. But I do want to emphasize the importance of student choice and kids being able to get the books that they want to get while they're in the library. Um, so if you have a requirement about a specific kind of book, I hope that you can let that be one book and then maybe the other three or four books that they check out are their choice. My official checkout limit is five books, but I know that um, various teachers like to adjust that as needed depending on their students. Uh, but the important thing is I want kids to have access to books. So um, don't um, hesitate to let them get books in the library. They, books can go home and books are due after two weeks or they can be renewed. I don't charge any kind of late fees or uh, overdue fees, but we do encourage kids to get their books back on time. You'll get a weekly email that shows your overdues and this also um, goes to students and families if they check their email as well. But even if students have five books checked out, let's say, and they come to the library, I don't I really don't like students to come to the library and be told they can't get something. So let's work together this year on this. And you know, if a kid's got 15 books out, then you know that may be a different conversation. But if they've got out five and they forgot to bring their books back, then maybe they check out one and keep that in the classroom. So I hope we can make sure that kids are having a positive experience in the library this year and getting the books that they need to get. Um, I also wanted to let you know that um, Kids and you can look up books in the classroom ahead of time to see what we have in the library so that you're not spending all your library time looking on the computer trying to see what books there are. Um, so if you go to your start page or from this presentation and click on the link, it will take you to Destiny Discover where you can search for whatever book you're looking for. Um, if you log in up here in the top, you can sign in with Google and that allows you to put books on hold. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here so that you can see. Once you log in, you'll see your name um, up in the top corner. So now if I search for a book or a topic, then I can go in and see where that book is located. And here's how you would do that. So um, Right. If I, I'm going to go ahead and click on the book because it's a little easier to see once you do that. All right. So right here, where it says sublocation, that tells you where the book is located. So this is in the informational section, which means you'll look up on the ceiling and look for that big informational banner. It's in the animal section. So then you would go to the animal section and then you would look for 597.3. Now, if this book said that it was out, you could click this button right here, hold, and that would reserve that book for you so that when it gets checked into the library, the computer will let me know that it's time for that book to go to the next person on the list. This is also a place where you can go to look for ebooks and audiobooks as well. Um, so please take advantage of, <clears throat> of that this year and make sure that you're getting some books for your classroom too. Um, I did want to talk a little bit about computer help. We have a great help desk system in our county where if you put in a help desk ticket for any teacher computer issue that you're having, whether it's your projector or your personal computer, your school computer, um, our technicians are pretty quick about getting out to the school and getting things fixed. Um, I am happy to help you with computer issues, but sometimes I'm not as fast because I'm working with the classes. So um, I would always encourage you just to put in that help desk ticket. And then if you're able to talk with me, that's great. And you could always cancel your help desk ticket, but Alec may be able to get to you faster than me. For student issues, Ms. Dalton is our SST in the library and she can help with computer issues or give your student a new computer to use while theirs is being repaired. And she is here Monday through Thursday from 720 to 1120 and Friday from 720 to 1020. Those are the best times to send a student to the library. They don't have to have an appointment. They just come on up to the library and have some help with their computer. 
Of course, computer problems happen all hours of the day, so you can send students after this time, but if I'm with a class, I will not be able to help them, um, and I may have to tell them to come back later at a different time or to wait until the next day to see Ms. Dalton. So just do your best to send students during the time she's here, and they will be sure to be helped. Um, I did want to go back to one more thing that I forgot to say earlier, and that is scheduling. When you go to the library calendar, which I'm sharing with all of you, over here to the left, you'll see all of your calendars. These will be different than what you see for me, but the 2022 Barrow Media Center calendar is where you book appointments. And here's the trickiest thing. So let's say that I go on and I want to book a nine o'clock on Friday and I want to do nine to 945. And I put my time, my, my appointment, uh, story and checkout. So you just put kind of what you're wanting. If it's just checkout, if it's a story and checkout, if there's a specific standard that you're wanting to work on, you could even add a description down here at the bottom. But here is the tricky thing. Do you see right here where it says Andy Plemons? It will always default to your personal calendar. So if you click save right now, you are putting that appointment on your calendar. You are not putting it on the library calendar. Even though you see the library calendar on your overall Google calendar, it's not putting it there. So you have to actually click here and change to the Barrow Media Center so that when you click save, it puts that on the Media Center calendar. And you'll notice it's the same color as the other Media Center appointments that are already there. And you'll see that other calendars are in different colors. So it'll match what's over here, this color, with what's over here. I will also confirm your appointment each week by sending you an invite that will put it on your personal calendar as well. So if you don't get a confirmation email from me by the end of the week for the upcoming week, that's a good sign that you put um, your time on the wrong calendar, or you could always email me and I can be like, oh gosh, I forgot to send you an invite. So sorry about that. But um, just double check with me if you haven't gotten a confirmation because it's always awkward when I'm with a class and you show up with your class thinking that you have a library time and we have to say, sorry, you've got to turn around and go back to class. It's always disappointing for the students and it messes up your day too. So um, just help out with that as much as possible. As always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out and ask. I'm happy to help you with anything you have a question about. Um, it may take a little bit to get to you, but I'll do my best.